Natty boys. <laughs> Natty boys. <laughs> Natty boys making game. Welcome back to another episode of the Natty Boys podcast. My name is Wayne. And I'm here with my co hosts, Brian, Giraffe, Win. What's up? Homie, Dirk Emmerich, Mr. Ready Too Early. And we're back with another episode. This is episode five of the Natty Boys podcast. And yeah. What's up, guys? <laughs> what is up? Catch up. Let's go a little bit. It's been a while. It's been like, uh, yeah. about, oh, this is like a week, right? Yeah. Seven yeah. weeks. It's worlds. Yeah. Oh, seven weeks. Yes. Yeah. Oh, seven, yeah. yeah, seven weeks from worlds. Damn. That's oh. great. Yeah, yeah. We were just talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. How you guys feeling? What's up? What's been, what's new with you guys? How's everything? Man, it's, it's going good. Very well, we good, actually. Like, it's it's insane. It's seven weeks for some reason. It feels long now for me. I don't know. Yeah, it's it feels like, like seven months for me. Damn, bro. Yeah, a lot of living in that time. Nothing. So, yeah, but all in all, man, it's still like from week to week, feeling better and better. And now actually it's the point for me where like training is so much fun again. And like every session, I'm looking so much forward to training and making progress and yeah, everything, man. Hell yeah. That's what's up, dude. How's the recovery yeah. going with you guys? What's up with you, Brian? How, you... It's it's pretty much like linear at this point. I don't know. I, I feel like 99% normal. It's just the, the whole libido kick, like <laughs> that issue. That's that's gonna just <laughs> yo, come back on its own terms, you know. Yo, people were laughing at that uh, in the Bro, comments. I know. Like, I was. La- I'm laughing at it too. <laughs> but here's the thing: it it, it comes. You, I, I, you know, it's like it's hopefully I get on Natty News. Like. Yeah, I talked about this, about this on Natty News. Like that was the first thing to go before things even got difficult. I wasn't even like that lean when it disappeared. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. That's great. I mean, Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh. Shout out to Natty News. Brian was on the, the latest episode. First episode, yeah. 2022. It was real good. If you guys yeah. didn't watch that, go give that a, a view. Thanks for having me on, you guys. Yeah, we, we, we love what they do. So, Oh, yeah, big time. Got to support the homies. Yeah. How was that, by the way? Did you, you, you enjoyed it over there? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I got to talk about uh, just long-term goals with this offseason. Got to do a quick little recap of the 2021 season as well. Um, yeah. I, I mean, what's been going on with you, Wayne? How's training been? Shit, <laughs> man. I, like, I got sick last week. I, I know you guys know, but the viewers don't, uh, if, if they don't follow me on Instagram. But, um, yeah, yeah, I was sick last week, so I took the whole week off. This week is kind of just getting back into it. And uh, I don't know. Like, towards the end of the week, I started feeling way better. Beginning of the week sucked, man. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Just, like, the recovery just shot. I forget, you know, when you take, like, a week off and then you come back in. Um, oh. Yeah, it's like recovery just it just doesn't feel the same you know what i mean from session to session like i was super fucking sore oh yeah i'm not used to that like it's like a different story you know what i mean like uh when you're like kind of not detrained but like yeah when you take like a week off and then you come you back into the gym. momentum to work off of and right that's what i'm saying it's like usually i'm sore but it's like a different type of sore like i did uh my first upper body day on uh monday and um i barely i did like what like a, a flat neutral uh grip press dumbbell press and then i did an incline those are only two chest movements i really did or only two pressing movements i did and i was super shot like the next uh upper body session crazy even at the end of the week like i worked i did upper i have three upper body days um throughout the week and the third day is like just like kind of like a very high rep light kind of uh day and and that was yesterday and it was Dude, I was like fucking shot. I was not used to that feeling, but you know, build, it, it felt good though to to be back in yeah. and just build up some some momentum. So yeah. it's yeah, yeah and like Dirk said, it it training so momentum back. Yeah, the motivation just super high still. So yeah, that's perfect. Um, that's perfect. Since today's podcast, we are going to be talking about basically just training and how that's been yeah. since world ended. Oh yeah, mm. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so let's talk uh, about their training first. <laughs> yeah you guys want to just talk about like just briefly what your currently um what your current split is how many days a week you're training things like that yeah i can do that go ahead Dirk. Yeah, yeah. go for it Dirk. Right. So, so yeah i'm back like training five days per week like i think the first 
two or three weeks right after Worlds, right after prep was more like a recovery phase, like four days per week training, extremely high rep training. Uh, what was really, really good, like my connective tissue recovered so much. My <laughs> only issue was, I told you, like the tension headaches I got from that yeah. high web trend. Yo. Damn, it's gone now, by the way. It's freaking okay. gone. That's good. But That's good. Like everyone sees this, like high web training, keep care, like tension headache. Man, it's so bad. <laughs> Did you end up having to take the ibuprofen or were you good once the reps came? Good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk a little bit about tension headaches because I've been getting this week. It was like the first week I, I started uh, getting it throughout. Well, yeah. like just bodybuilding training because when I was powerlifting um, in, in the high rep range, even sometimes yeah. in the low rep range, I would get a lot of tension headaches. But you did low rep? Yeah, yeah sometimes. Like, sometimes. Deadlift, deadlift, like low rep, maybe like five man. reps. Like not like three reps or like okay. one rep, but like maybe like in the five plus rep range when I was powerlifting. But uh, that, when, when I started doing this uh, bodybuilding prep, I didn't feel any tension headaches at all. But this week, like uh, – Exactly. Bad, dude i don't yeah, know what yeah. it was um so i just took ibuprofen but like it's not really working well so what yeah, were you doing do? i needed it i had so much headache right afterwards you took it every hours. day every session i took it just for like one session and then it was gone actually gone. wow so, yeah my, like my first call with that was always like just take it for a week straight and then it's gone after yeah that. yeah i think i might yeah. do like that. before my training session even starts i'll just pop 200 milligrams mm. and then go into the session mm -hmm. I mean, it I don't know how healthy that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's another thing. Like, I, I'm, I'm personally, I'm just like a stubborn dude. I don't like taking like medication unless I absolutely need it. So even even little things like like Tylenol, like I know it's not that big of a deal to take like a couple of Tylenols, but um, I just don't, you know, I like to just dug it out <laughs> and yeah. just, you know what I mean? But uh, it makes me yeah, more it was bad this week. So then I'll take whatever I have to. Yeah, exactly. So so it was bad. So I just was like, I, I started taking ibuprofen, and uh, it would work a little bit, but like every day it just keeps coming back. I don't know. Like even throughout the day, even <laughs> really? I don't know what I don't, I don't even think it's a tension headache at this point. That's yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's weird because like I'll take, I'll take <laughs> two hundred milligrams. I'll I'll wait like thirty minutes, start trading, and then it's like it's almost it's gone. normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Notice it. So that's what I've been doing, but. I don't know uh yeah you see coming back pretty pretty often and Here, not pretty often but like i had it in 2014 i remember um, i would go to a session i would do like one or two reps of my first exercise it would kick in immediately yeah yeah just from uh, the bracing I think the warm yeah, yeah. Man. I think. Oh. man because it was like i was doing in 2016 i got them again because i was doing sets of 10 to 12 on sumo deadlifts mm -hmm. and because i was doing them like consecutively i don't yeah. even think i breathe much in between yeah yeah that, i think that's what it is just keeping like that brace and that tension just, yeah which is so which is stupid because you can still maintain the brace and still breathe it's just like yeah completely... right right it just <laughs> you're probably holding it throughout the fucking yeah i was just trying to get like 10 reps yeah. and shit i was trying to get <laughs> yeah, it. super high reps man it's so hard to breathe yeah because yeah. the... yeah, then yeah, at the same time <laughs> you're aiming for that like that that rep range because I, I know what you mean yeah, Dirk, like, you yeah. were doing like 30 second rest periods too, yeah, right? Doing time web. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, trying to get them out. Yeah, and it's almost like you, you know, you you want to fucking keep pushing so you can get the reps in. Because <laughs> the longer you wait, you know what I mean? It's just like gonna be harder to finish that that, that and, and reach the rep range that you need to reach, especially when you're on high reps. But, but yeah, I just wanted to put that out there because maybe the viewers uh yeah, I've done but, also. You know what I mean, they might go through that, like get tension headaches. They don't know what to do. Um, like, like, so yeah, really bad. So that's luckily gone. Like after these three weeks, everything we covered so good. <laughs> or maybe they could relate to it. Yeah, because, like it was like, how can I tell? It was super hard because I was so motivated after two weeks of like, hey man, I want to train hard again. I want to do the traditional training again. And it's a good thing, like long term thinking wise, will I still feel so fresh, so good? And yeah, and now we are back five days, three upper days, two lower days, everything in the web range, uh, in like eight to fifteen webs, nothing above, nothing below, and yeah, upper man. Lower, you said. Sorry. Upper lower splits, but still. Yeah, upper law split. So I feel like ours is like very, very similar. Yeah, I think we have a really similar uh, one. Like 
mainly bodybuilding movements. Like I'm not doing squats, no bench press, no um, traditional deadlifts, just RDLs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's highly, highly like only bodybuilding focus. So yeah, it's, yeah, something really new, new for me as well in the off season because I was used before to do bench press and squats, and now I'm not doing that anymore. And what I recognize the most is I'm way more recovered that way, way more recovered. Like it's a different kind of thing, like doing a lot of volume on squats compared to leg press, like the fatigue similar oh, radio, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I gotta tell you, oh man, doing like so so Birdo has me on one I similar to you, I do um two lower body days, right? And uh, uh the main movement uh is is a um the squat pattern the squat variation is the leg press and uh um, yeah. so one day is uh quad dominant and one day is um hip dominant bro <laughs> when i did the quad dominant one oh my god i've never like really um well throughout this prep i've never really uh had a day where you know it's quad dominant and hip dominant so uh, hey, i would just do it yeah I've seen your uh, your quad dominant leg press. Do you have any? Uh, you have squat shoes? I. <laughs> funny thing is, I have a squat shoes, and but it, it's in Texas because <laughs> oh, I let Nico funny. borrow. I let Nico. Oh. Yeah, I let, like he fucking. I don't know. I wasn't because usually, um, just squatting. Mm. I got comfortable with flats, right? So, um, I uh, was just doing everything with flats, and then yeah. so so at that time he borrowed my uh my my squat shoes. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, they're in Texas, so I need to get them back. Yeah, you you guys want to go into like how how you uh vary your stances for leg press to either target your quads or your hip? Mm -hmm. Wait, what? Mm. Is that a you question? Guys to, yeah, you guys want to get into that, like how? Oh, how? how yeah, 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 what yeah. the technique is like? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, for me, this was like the first. Just for anyone who's watching um, who's not aware. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think, well, I think it's just more foot positioning and then the hip positioning, right? So, uh, for the quad dominant one, um, dude, I really, I felt it's like, I could barely walk that day. It was, it was weird. I don't know. That's why I meant about the recovery thing, but we'll get into that later. But, um, yeah, just the mm. foot positioning, just a little bit more now and, and more downward. And I even almost, um, put a, uh, have my heels off slightly off of yeah. the, uh, the, uh, yeah. not too much, but just like very, you know, like a, maybe like an inch or two off of the, yeah, that, that's the why I brought up the squat shoes thing. Mm -hmm. yeah that definitely would help you get a little bit deeper yeah um, that's what i was thinking too yeah, on there. yeah you know what i actually do have like the older the romaleo twos um mm, yeah i might, I really might just try those yeah they get, um, it's like a two-inch heel it's really good yeah yeah yeah. So, so i might just try those but i i felt it already just from doing that and um yeah mm. yeah just that that positioning and then um also the obviously the more knee uh, knee flexion you have is going to be more quad dominant right so yep. focusing on that how do you guys kind of go about the hip do uh hip dominant um uh leg press like like how i'm doing it is like like yeah, you yeah. Said, up higher but also not too high it's like it took me like two weeks to find that sweet spot for me like when you put your feet up too high you don't have like that perfect um how can I say that perfect? Yeah, and power output, like not a natural curve, you know, when you yeah. put in two feel. So, yeah, what I'm doing, I put my feet really close together, straight forward. And then I also, I don't open my knees out too, too much. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a really short range of motion on me. So, and I like my glutes as well while I'm doing it, like really flexing it all the time. Okay. Yeah, another yeah. cue that I keep in mind too when I'm doing the uh, the quad dominant one is instead of like pulling myself into uh, pulling my 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 ass into like the 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 pad, I'll pull yeah. more push my like lower back into the the pad, and that kind of helps a little bit too. I don't on know the, if you use that that kind of that cue, Dirk. On the dominant one, yes. Yeah, yeah. Like the back, yeah. Yeah, and more for the hip dominant one. I'm kind of like. I actually even put a plate underneath or like a something underneath because my butt kind of comes off a little bit. So it helps with the, with the range of motion. So I don't know if you guys seen like I put like a plate or like a, like a yoga mat or a yoga block under my butt. And mm -hmm. that kind of helps the, with the range uh, of motion and it just helps me not like um, 
have my butt coming off the, the pad and I'll kind of pull my, my, myself into the, uh, the seat and that kind of helps. Um, but yeah, yeah. On a nor what I'm trying was, what was I trying to explain? Oh, on a normal leg press, I just would have like a neutral uh, stance and I'll kind of open up a little bit more, more like a, a, a squat, like a deep squat. If, yeah. if that makes sense. that's what I was trying to kind of, uh, get to in a compared to like a, a more quad dominant one. Cause of the, when I'm focusing on more quad dominant stance, um, I don't really open up as much. It's like less range of motion. That's what I was trying to yeah. kind of, uh, I guess, articulate trying to compare. <clears throat> okay. But yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask Brian, but you don't even do leg press, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't have leg press, but, uh, I mean, uh, let me just, uh, go over what I'm doing. Oh yeah. General. Go ahead. Over. Um, I am training five days a week. I'm doing a push pull leg upper lower split right now. Um, so on my first, yeah, on my first, I have two lower days. So on my first lower day, it is a sumo deadlift. And then on that same day, I'll also do a heel elevated SSB squat. So kind of like your, uh, your quad dominant uh, leg press, I have my heels elevated. So I can get as much forward knee travel as possible. I try to get as much knee flexion, that movement as possible. So I'm only working with like 245 right now, 245 pounds. Mm -hmm. But it's all quad dominant. So I I literally just try to take out my hip. I try not to shoot my hips back when I squat down. I try to keep, I try to just put all the tension into my quads and then put it all into my knees and uh, ankles. Mm -hmm. And it's it's pretty killer right now. yeah. What, what yeah. brand is your, your bar again? It's like a certain brand, right? It's, it's like a, a Kabuki Transformer. A Kabuki, bar. that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's nice because I, I just put it, I put the setting on the SSB, which changes yeah. the camera angle of the bar. And uh, mm. yeah, I, I put like, um, I put like a one inch mat under my heel. Mm -hmm. And then it just forces me to kind of put all the, all the weight into my quads. It's crazy because then it's like, it's really easy to cop, to like try to cop out and just shoot your hips back to help you to help it's like support yes, you during the movement yeah, yeah. use more hips, use more glutes and uh, lower back mm -hmm. but it, yeah it, it's difficult because you kind of have to force yourself mm -hmm. force I yourself to keep your hips under so you don't uh recruit all those when other you're muscles. squatting um let's talk about like the this is a question i get a lot and it's um uh what do you say about like the the forward knee travel because a lot of people talk about like oh should i is it wrong or bad to um shoot my knees past the toes or yeah yeah so i think as far no. forward as possible man yeah yeah because the more i think the more knee well not that i think the more knee flexion the more quad uh uh, stimulus, uh yeah as long as you have more, healthy knees i wouldn't worry about it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. wait what'd you say as long as what as long as I have healthy knees. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have a history of knee pain or anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No point worrying about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And, um, yeah. and then on my second lower day, I have uh, just a high bar squat and flats. I'm trying to get some good depth on that so I can get a bit more glutes, a bit more adductors in there as well. Because mm -hmm. I already have my quad dominant day. I need my, my, other, uh, my other squat day. Just hit everything else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why right. team full right. team full ROM for you. <laughs> yeah, no, but the thing is, yeah, I've been working on that because uh, the thing is, the heavier I get on my squats, the more I tend to cut depth. Just it's just old tendencies with powerlifting. Yeah, I'll, I'll still hit depth, but it's like not how deep I would want to go. You want, yeah, to actually stimulate the muscles. Yeah, for yeah, <sighs> yeah. Like I'll hit depth. I'll hit. I'll get the 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 hip crease below the top of the knee joint. You know, but. With, with bodybuilding you kind of want to get even deeper than that yeah yeah, yeah. that's the mike israel way yeah man <laughs> what about your upper body days what do your upper body days look like um upper body so i have the push pull um on my push days i have um a flat dumbbell bench where i have my feet on the bench actually so that'll help me pull my pelvis back into alignment get a neutral spine get a longer range of motion I know Dirk does it the exact same way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, just some cues on that, actually. Um, what are your cues on that, Dirk? My cues on that, like, uh, let me think. I still 
flex everything while I'm doing it. I still flex my glutes and stuff for just for stability, mm -hmm. kind of. And then what we uh, also talked about, like I also uh, like waist my head a little bit yeah. forward. So I have like less, like I tend to have like a huge arch on my back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that way I'm really flat. And I also like hit like the like the yeah middle parts of the chest having a uh, yeah I put that exact same way just like head off the bench because if I do get to the bench I uh, same with Dirk I start arching my my presses once I get difficult at the end of a set right and then I also yeah. I also uh I pay attention to my hamstrings too so I start pulling on my hamstrings just mm. to maintain that neutral spine yeah same so what I'm doing as well man and yeah usually yeah. And like my elbows, bringing them as far forward together mm -hmm. as possible. like my yeah. my humerus, like my upper arm bone. Yeah, like yeah. As as possible. Just trying to let the scapula move freely, right? Exactly that. Back. Yeah, yeah. The same with the cable press arounds as well. Mm -hmm. So it's actually like the cable press arounds. It's like really similar to the dumbbell bench press. Like mm -hmm. like how I like thinking about it. Like I was like bringing it like. I guess far forward. Yeah, man, those press rounds get me so sore, especially the clavicular press yeah, rounds. Yeah, man. And those ones suck. Uh, <laughs> what are, what are your cues on the press rounds? Queer exhaustion as well, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. What are your cues yeah. on the press rounds? My cues on the press rounds? Well, I try to have like really kind of like, I figured out to have like a natural range of motion kind of like, mm -hmm. I tried to have it in one line, like not, I, at the beginning I was like pausing it like this, yeah. this, point A, B, but I tried to do it like really smooth in one fashion. Yeah, yeah, because then I was thinking, so the way I approach it is, I think of it mm -hmm. as a press, and then at the very end, that's when I'll converge. Like that, man, like when yeah, my, I go my, into my pec almost. Mm -hmm. It becomes a fly movement for me. Like yeah. press, press, fly. Like I yeah. don't go like all the way here, like until I'm here. Then I mm -hmm. think of doing a fly. That's yeah, my I'm trying to, I'm trying to resist the urge to like just press and then like pull in after and just make it one fluid motion, like you said. Mm. Yeah, exactly that. Like a fluid motion because that was yeah. what I was doing at the beginning. Like press, press, press. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then it's like. <laughs> You're not really getting mo the most out of the movement, but I think as well. So yeah, it, it took me a few sessions to get the angle right too, because it's like you want to keep the the pulley, you want to keep it in line with the elbow into the forearm too. You want to even at the end range, you want to keep the tension yeah. in the pecs where it should be. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. So yeah, also also trying to keep the pulley as close to your hand your body too. That Sorry? also helps a lot. Just trying to keep the pulley as close to your body as you can. Yeah, like the cable, yeah. you mean, what? Yeah, yeah, the, like, yeah, the cables, yeah. Yes, yes, it is. That's what I'm doing. And man, yeah. like also for the, uh, yeah, for the uh, um, upper chest, for the clavicular, like I feel it so much. Wow, that's yeah. huge. Are you, are you doing the costal press rounds? Or are you doing, uh, you, mm -hmm. you're doing two variations, I believe, right? I do, yeah, do it like one time I'm doing it neutral and uh -huh. one time the upper chest focus like this way. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I do, so. I do the clavicular and I do like the costal, so like the lower. Oh, yeah, the lower. Yeah, I do the like the clavicular and like the, the neutral way. Like, yeah, yeah. How I'm doing it. So both Look really good right now. Yeah. Like an incline, and flat press, and then uh, and then press mm. rounds. They're, it's like the best combo you can get. It is, man. Like on the like upper, like when I do incline bench, I do the incline cable press rounds before and on the mm -hmm. flat band i do the yeah the neutral cable press around yeah. before yeah that's a, that's basically exactly how i do it um on my incline dumbbell bench day i do a costal press around cool and then, yeah yeah and then on my um my flat bench day i do a clavicular press around amazing man yeah so yeah the rep range you you work at you're working around for the press rounds just in general like uh yeah just from day to day you have like you know, it's a it's pattern or something. Because, yeah, it's funny because my dumbbells in my gym right now, they only go from five to 75 pounds. So I'm trying to maximize every weight range. So mm. right now I'm only so kind of limited. Yes, because like on, on flat bench, I can get pretty, uh, pretty high on those. Oh, yeah. So I'm trying to just max out the 60s. Like I'm doing set to like 13 with the 60s. Okay, and then I'm 65s, just bring it back to sets of eight, work up to 12s, 13s again. And then I'll go to the 70s because 
Otherwise, if I keep it in the 8 to 12 range, I'm going to get to the 80s, 90s, and then <laughs> I'm going to have to yeah, spend that's what like, I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of money. So I'm trying to just milk everything I can with the lower. Yeah, <laughs> lower. yeah. yeah. No, I'm staying at like a higher, relatively higher rep range. Yeah, you know, yeah. What's the highest your rep range goes? Because I'm, I'm asking because uh, me and Dirk pretty much have the same thing. Just probably mm-hmm. extra, some exercises are different. Like I don't do press arounds. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. I yeah, go up to 20s on some exercises. That's like the, the highest you, you put your rep. Yeah, on uh, this past week of leg extensions, I did three sets of 20 reps. Oh, my God. That sounds like hell. Fucking God, man. Oh, my I God. I did 15s the other day. I'm like, holy shit. I can't even oh, go man. as heavy yeah, as I Yeah, I have to, like, close though. my eyes to focus. And then I see, like, when my eyes are closed, I see, like, a spinning wheel. It's crazy. <laughs> I see, like, a spinning wheel or my vision. It, like, sharpens. It's, like, my senses, it's like, they cool. heighten in the weirdest way, like, it's not like I, I feel I felt like I was gonna black out because I with leg extension mm-hmm. specifically I started to really refine them because I was watching some older videos where at the bottom I would kind of speed out of that bottom part and then I would have it more controlled towards the contraction. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But it's like I'm trying to control the whole way. So I exactly a recent cue I've been using is kind of think of like the fibers just slowly contracting against the resistance and not just getting the the pad from point a to point b yeah yeah and you think you think all right let, let me just go from full knee flexion to full knee extension right but then if you just yeah if you think about it like that you think about how the the knee angle changes but not how the muscles are working yeah yeah you're just kind of going through the movement really yeah yeah. So, yeah so i've been thinking like all right just slowly contract against the resistance feel the muscles just shorten the entire way yeah 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 yeah, yeah. game changer oh my god yeah i was gonna ask too Tempo, what do you, what, how do you guys go about tempo? Um, cause yeah, obviously like, yeah. For, no, like, for me, it's like just having control, man. Yeah. Having total control. Like on some movements, I feel like tempo is more important than on others. I feel yeah. like, especially for hamstrings, for RDLs. I feel like I see it's, so many people. I feel like could have a way better stimulus if they would do it with less well, weight, yeah. more controlled. That's it. That's what I'm saying. So, so, like, what is your guideline for? Um, do you have any like mental guidelines for, uh, like, in terms of tempo? Because, yeah, like, like, like lowering the weight with control, with a lot of control, and then bringing in the, it up as fast as possible. That's like always my yeah, cue. Same, same, same. But like, do you have like, do you count in your head like a time, or you just try to control? Because I feel like if you're, if there's no like mental cue of like timing then you're like you won't even know like like you'll think you're con- you know controlling it like for example um the other day i was like we were talking i think we were talking earlier about uh doing leg extensions like i felt like i was controlling the fuck out of the, the movement then i watched the video because i record all my sets and um i watched the video i'm like fuck i could have you know been more poised i could have been uh controlling a little bit more and yeah yeah so so do you guys have any like mental cues like maybe like three seconds on the way down or five seconds on the way down or whatever it is each rep um for me it depends on the body part with calves okay. calves 100 percent. i have to have some kind of tempo i do two count pauses at the top and then mm. I'll, I'll i'll control yeah. it on the way down i won't count the on the way down i'll just keep it as controlled as possible i'll chill at the bottom for like one or Double two seconds count. yeah, yeah same, same. Same. same yeah because it's, it's like it's muscle groups where you can really easily cheat them that I have to be yeah. a little bit standardized with, uh, like Dirk said, hamstrings as well. That's the one where it's like, if I don't control it, I'm just going to go down as fast as I can. It's really hard to standardize for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a lot better. In, yeah. And I'm even the point that I can like intuitively feel also on cars. I don't count anymore because it's also like a kind of distraction for me nowadays. I just, yeah. I, that intuition like i just feel when it's two seconds so just down, like experience I, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah just, with counting yeah. too if you're counting how long you're holding it i lose i lose track of yeah there's rest. too much to think about true true yeah yeah, yeah too much focus and uh, like losing too much focus uh-huh, on. Uh-huh. what i also like to do like on many movements is like 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 doing pauses and right before like really flexing that muscle like that muscle mind connection kind of thing yeah yeah for sure I'm, like, really, like flexing it and like imagine that i do all with the muscle and but still as fast as possible 
uh, without using momentum. So yeah. like mm -hmm. Dirk said, I, I don't count on most exercises. It's more like I standardize this amount of control. If yeah, I feel yeah. like I'm losing that, yeah. that high standard of control, then obviously um, I'm going to, yeah. I, like you said, um, you know, how, like you record all your sets. I also record all my sets, even if I don't post them, just so I can see how well did I execute yeah. that set? What can I work on? Is yeah. the tempo way too fast on the way down, on the way up, you know? Yeah, I was about to say, I guess it's a good thing that I record my sets because it's like, I guess it comes with uh, the experience, like, and just like seeing it because it's like, you feel it, like you, what you see and what you feel might be different. Um, you know yeah, very mean? different. When you, yeah, when you yeah, have yeah. Like, black acid just building up in that area, your yeah. sense of Right, and that pain, bro, that pain when you just like on the 10th rep and you have to do like five more and it's just like burning already. <laughs> You don't oh, feel yeah. like you can get it out. Man, I'm like on the tenth rep. I got ten more. And it's already burning. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. That's exactly. when I close my eyes, and I'm just like, all right, exactly. no, rest, exactly. no resting between reps. Otherwise, dude, the mm -hmm. longer I rest between reps, the the crazier it's gonna hurt. So I'm just like, yeah, exactly. Just keep going. Just keep going. Embrace the pain. Right, and then, right. And that's where I like try to find like a groove where it's like, um, like some movements I just try. I don't even like fully lock out. Like even for for uh, leg extensions um or or certain leg uh curls i'll try to just like stop like right before uh full knee extension yeah especially on leg curls like even like alberto introduced me to do that to have like more tension on the muscle to like to, like don't go below 15 15 yeah yeah, yeah i was like actually thinking 20 that, degrees yeah, yeah I, saw, before... I saw a post by uh Kassim about like leaving those last 15 degrees or so before you yeah. get to full knee extension on hamstring curls just to keep yeah one, exactly just yeah, the, the yeah, sometimes, on. yeah, sometimes I just go the full, the full range just so I can standardize it. It's kind of hard for me right now to know where that 15 degrees is because I'm scared yeah. I'm going to cutting it short. So I think eventually I'm going to start working that in. Yeah. yeah. I'm a bit more comfortable. Dude, it's so much I'm harder though, bro. Yeah. But it, but it feels it so good, but it just like, it hurts so good. <laughs> I, I yeah, no, it, bro, I have to like massage my legs after fucking leg extensions and shit. Like yeah, I have to no, slap oh, my legs. Bro, like wake you, the fuck up, see, dude. You've seen me, right? Like I, I finished my set of leg extensions. I have to slap myself really hard to distract myself from the pain with from another the, type yo, of pain. Yo, exactly. That's funny as hell. Yeah. I've like slapped myself in the face too, just to like feel something else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, like oh, after oh, my oh, set, it just looks like I have cerebral palsy. Yo. My body going yeah. everywhere yeah. yeah man and people at my gym they look at me who's that maniac <laughs> Sometimes. yeah we look crazy at the end of our sets. Like, like when you yeah. train that what's going you know, on <laughs> yeah i mean well brian's not in a commercial gym but like if you're in a commercial gym bro not too many people unless you're at like a bodybuilding gym or like not too people too many people are training hard like when you, no, you know when you know what hard. hard is not too many yeah. people are training hard bro because like yeah when i'm finishing sets like that's the my reaction you know what i mean like i have to like massage my legs or i'm just like completely dead like i have to like lay on the floor almost all the time i need to sit down or like I'm <laughs> yeah like, i mean like i'm cursing i'm cursing the fucking machine out <laughs> yeah yeah and the thing is dude it's like we're not even like over training it's just exactly 100 just putting and your rp8 turns into like what other people's rp10s look like you know because you know gun to your head you can do at least two more reps. Yeah. Even if it looks yeah, like yeah, RP10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where that over, we go back to that over analytical shit where it's like some people like think too much where it's like, oh my God, if I hit this next rep, am I going to be able to recover? Like, I don't even think about that. Like I'm, if I have like a, yeah. um, you know what I mean? If I have like, if I'm, if on my paper I, or in my mind, I, I have to do 15 reps at a certain weight i'm gonna fucking do it you know what i mean like i'm not gonna yeah. worry about oh am i gonna recover am i gonna be recovered you know what i mean like thinking too much about like like the recovery after that or whatever like yeah, yeah that's all something with being over like you got to put that effort in and some people are just too you know what i mean like i think i think like yeah. when it comes to that over analytical stuff it's like people become too soft like too soft point, and, yeah you know what i mean at some point they'll have, like, they'll have like, like a target rpe They'll have a target yeah. RP and then every yeah. rep they're like, am I there? Am I there? Yeah, it's like, right. That's what I'm trying to get done. Yeah. And, and then and put hundred percent effort. So it's like by that last rep, you still have a few more in you because you know you, you can push to that. Extent. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's and that's why it's... there's that whole argument. There's that whole argument where it's <laughs> where it's saying like if you're using RPD for RIR, it means you're not training yeah. hard. It's yeah. Like, oh, yeah. You're not mutually 
inclusive. You can have both. You can train hard right. and still use art. And, and that's where you I have to like find like that happy medium because yeah, happy yeah. Mediums. And sometimes I fuck it up as well. Sometimes I I'm going to failure and I don't want to go to failure in one set. And I think like doing it in one set isn't as bad and it won't impact your recovery as much. Yeah. And also movement. Like sometimes it happens for me for triceps a, a lot of times where I'm like, damn, all right, I went to failure, but it doesn't impact recovery that much when it's also only one set i mm -hmm. feel and it's a huge difference like doing like three sets to failure on leg press or rdls and like even yeah, one, yeah. huge difference like that's the over analytical thing like some people oh I, I was supposed to doing rpe of seven or eight and i went like to nine or ten and they like damn will i recover will i recover and i think that's like a yeah, close yeah. mind and yeah, yeah. it's like being stressed about this will actually like yeah yeah man sometimes I, yeah, you just gotta you gotta get down and dirty man like you gotta yeah i think with isolations you can you can push a lot harder than you yeah think. right i, I learned that first yeah, and only cycles. like usually my last set i go until i only can do partial reps what do you guys do for delts just side side, side uh, uh races. races yep yep same same I started yeah. doing interior delt presses. I've never done that before. Me too. Oh, Me too. Bro. I kind of like that. Oh, yeah. shit. I guess we're on the same wavelength there. We're all doing, <laughs> no. started doing those recently. How you place your, your, your elbows? Like, what's your range, kind of? Like, I'm still yeah, I'm trying to... Around with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more neutral. I was trying to, like, go um, a little bit wider at one point, but it's it's bothering my shoulders. So I'm, yeah, I'm just going to try exactly. to just neutral grip. And then I have the... The pad yes. somewhere around like I don't know what between is, seventy like, and ninety, right? Like seventy and ninety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. How much arch, if at all, do you guys have in your uh, interior delt press? I try not to arch too much. Yeah. Not to arch too much. Yeah, yesterday was like the I was first wondering day about that. that, and yeah, yeah, I was worried about that, but I was just kind of going by the feel because if I feel it in the interior delt, then obviously you know you're doing it pretty correctly. Yeah, yeah it's like even if you're not doing. it, 100% correct. It's like, if anything, you hit your upper chest and everyone needs more upper chest. Right? Exactly. Exactly. That's what I was about to say too. Cause it becomes a, when you arch too much, it becomes like a, almost like a incline bench. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I think I yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out. It's very yeah. hard to standardize for me. Yeah. But little cues, obviously like with any pressing movement, just uh, obviously this wants to be, you want your uh, wrist and elbow wrist and elbows. to be in line yeah. also yeah. with the shoulder. Um, what, what are, are your keys, Dirk? Oh, on, on that one, same like what, what Wayne said, but I still need to figure out like where I'm positioning my elbows. Like I feel like too close. Is not too close. Is, yeah, somewhere yeah. in between. Like I like this way, actually, like this. Yeah, with the length of my arms, it's really weird because I, I can never stay stacked. That's the problem. Like if I, if I go in, it's still I'm going to lose that stack really quick. Yeah, so then maybe you have to cut your range. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna have to start cutting my range and not. Yeah, like, yeah, because you, you maybe, like, you don't have to. You like, you won't have the dumbbells touching the the, the upper chest. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, some I'm a, I'm like a huge that. fan of going full range of motion. But that that's the thing, though. Some people aren't built to go full range and still exactly. be able to muscle. Yeah. You know, exactly, and that's fine. Yeah. Uh, most of my presses, like most of my presses, I can't go all the way down. Otherwise, it starts looking like this. I start yeah, using yeah, and then you're just not stacked. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and then my triceps become the limiting factor. Yeah, in all my press yeah, yeah. oh i feel it really i feel a lot in the triceps too as well as uh well well a little bit more than just the normal press just when pressing like in a neutral position mm -hmm. but yeah yeah uh i don't know if it's like, you, that's like normal but that, i i felt it a lot in the the anterior delt and then also the triceps so yeah I mean, yeah it's just any pressing movement though you'll feel it like it, it you'll feel it in the triceps oh, 100 yeah, yeah. Definitely for me it's just <laughs> i need to, i need to start trying to limit that a little bit more yeah, yeah, yeah. With side delts, um, lateral raises, dumbbell lateral raises, they they do it. Yeah, yeah. Or even cable lateral raises. Cable, yeah. Too. I saw you were doing the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I did single arm the other day, but I think I want to. I want to try the ones that you. Uh, or well, for rear rear delts, the the ones that you were doing, um, where you kind of grab. Was that just reverse cable of flies? Wait for I me. Or I think uh, well. Ryan. I think I seen you do it. I think oh, I seen both of you do it. No, no, I haven't done that one. I've been doing a, I've just been using a, the spreader bar from Prime yeah. Fitness. I was doing face pulls with that. 
Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. No, I, th- I thought I saw you. Uh, it might have been someone else then. I don't know. Oh, no, no. I was, I was playing around with it for like a week or two. It was like oh, behind okay. the back, just dual lateral. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that was the cables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah playing around with it. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, honestly. No. I just like doing uh, unilateral work for my side delts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you, you, do, you were, you actually uh, focus side delts and then you obviously do the anterior a little bit with the anterior press. What about mm-hmm. rear delts? Do you guys, uh, just like a high pull or something or like, I just pull? do like rear delt fly, um, flies, mm-hmm. like, okay. Yeah, I started, yeah, oh, with the, with the rope. With the, yeah. Okay, yeah, I started, uh, practicing or just trying that out yesterday. Um, but the, my commercial gym sucks, dude. Like, the rope is so short. Like, you know how there's, like, longer ropes and, like, shorter ropes? Yeah. yeah the yeah, rope yeah. is so short, and it's just so annoying. Like, I don't know. Mm, yeah. I still been, get, I've, get it, but it's just not as comfortable as, mm. uh, like, a longer rope. Yeah. But, yeah. I've been, I've been playing around with, like, an upper back rear delt row as well. I just throw that in at the end of my pole day. Uh-huh. Where what, what, I have what, more, I have more of an arch. Yeah, I have, an, I have more of an arch in my spine. I have my chest up. If anything, I, I also have a little bit of like um, angling of the spine. I'll lean back a little bit into it. You know, like everything that you want to avoid during a lap bias. Yeah, row. lap bias row. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll basically... talk about the lap bias row because yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that, it, one's, that one's huge for all of us right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, dude, the cues just like yeah, uh, the just engaging the core, um, that slight lean forward. Also, what slight. I did. Um, Cause I do it on a, a row machine, um, like a, like a, like a, uh, you know, just a normal like cable row machine. And usually they have like those foot pads. Um, and so I put yeah. the 45 pounds, uh, 45 pound plates, just so yeah, I can I thought- like a lower, yeah. uh, foot positioning and it feels way better. And it's a, just a lot more comfortable. Um, because when you just have your feet higher, it's just hard to kind of like, have a forward lean, lean into it and trying to keep yeah at the same time yeah yeah just having that that forward lean position it, yeah it's kind of it kind of emulates a, a machine low row in that way you know like how yeah. you're the pad and then you kind of row it to yeah, the yeah 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 so that felt like that I would comfortable say. yeah which, it's interesting in the in the home gym setup doing these uh doing these rows i use the the prime fitness they're the rotate handles it lets me get like a little bit of just rotation on the contraction it feels amazing yeah yeah, yeah. Just like you said, I, I focus on getting that slight forwardly, not too much, mm-hmm. making sure like the um I'm bracing my abs. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not mm-hmm. passing midline when I pull back, paying more attention to the position of the humerus yeah. rather than where your elbow is going. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's another thing with the lat uh lat obviously when you're biasing the lats, um you want to keep the, the 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 core engaged, right? So if you're like yeah. ex- arching the back, it's like kind of you're losing Putting that into the upper back. Yeah, yeah, and then you're going to be working more upper back. Uh, yeah, and rumble. just making sure not to retract the scaps, you know? Yeah, exactly, not to retract the scaps. That's true. So you're going to be using a lot of uh, arms to stabilize the movement Yeah. more than yeah, yeah. Uh, just, yeah, the, the upper back musculature. Yeah, those are all good cues. Any other cues that you guys keep in mind? I remember you when I asked you guys, uh, you gave me a few. I think one was just to keep the rib cage down. Brian said rib cage down. I love yeah, that one. Just, yeah, just down, I also control. like the nose. I try to like pull it also down, kind of. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. keep being, yeah, yeah. yeah. Elbow positioning obviously is huge, right? Uh, when you're trying to bias the lats. Definitely. Yeah, so a lot of people when they pull, uh, they pull like past the torso. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's upper back. Well, even if you're right. pulling here and you're pulling past, you're still, you know, what I mean, you're still uh, if you if the elbows are coming past the torso, you you're not really getting you're so much start attracting the gaps and getting yeah exactly back. exactly so yeah, yeah those are all good cues yeah so yeah. like and for the upper back row for instance like targeting that it's the little bit of the opposite like they're doing like an arch yeah chest exactly. out and pulling like on my uh, to my armpits and like yeah. all day squeezing it as far as possible mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just feel it. Yeah. yeah like, like you can this, really feel it the difference like when you're practicing bit, it leaning a little bit back yeah, yeah yeah and that's when mm-hmm. you lean back when you're trying to work up the 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 upper back uh musc- muscles like the the rear delts traps rhomboids um yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't want to lean back when you're doing too far back uh, at all i actually lean back at all because you want to be more 
lean forward, right? Like, a little bit lean forward, I feel, on the lead, lead focused one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, what about, uh, about using momentum on back movement? I feel that's also a huge topic. Like some people, like, you know what I mean? Like some using still a lot of momentum. Other athletes don't do it at all. So what's your thoughts about using momentum on back movements? I try to standardize my movements as strictly as uh, I can, just mm -hmm. because I, I don't want to have momentum into the equation and then wonder if I'm actually making progress or if I'm just using more momentum the heavier I get, you know? Um, Definitely. That's another thing with the row. You can use a lot of momentum when you're um, uh, with your legs. Like you could, you, you know what I mean? Where you're kind of like leaning forward and then use your legs to kind of like almost like a rower machine. You know what I mean? Where you, you yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Where you're actually supposed to use your legs on a rower machine. Um, mm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why I like, a, kind of like a chest supported yeah. rowing as well. Chest supported yeah, rowing chest -supported does rowing rows are awesome. Awesome. the movement. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you guys right now? Am I doing a chest supported row? No. Yeah. I don't think no, so. Right no, no. Okay, no, okay. I don't think Berto. Well, the, the program that Bert, I've been playing around with different movements, but the program that Berto uh, has me doing that I'm going to do next week, uh, no, nah, there's no chest supported row. What about you, Dirk? Uh, I just do rows? like cable rows. Yeah, a lot of cable rows. Single arm left pull downs. And. Oh, you got you doing single arm. Yeah, I think that's it, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, like I have um, for my vertical rowing, for my vertical, yeah, I have uh, chessboard dumbbell rows. Like, mm -hmm. Just try. It's like I'm I'm targeting more upper back musculature because I have uh, I have the upper day and then I have a pull day. So one day mm -hmm. it's gonna be doing the 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 pronated dumbbell rows with the chest support. That's yeah. more for my upper back, a little bit of lats, but mostly upper back there. Yeah, and then. I'll on my second day, I will do um, just the, uh, what do you call it? The lat focus rows. And then I'll, I'll have like a, I'll throw in like a pull down on that. Uh, yeah, I was about to ask, you guys do pull downs? Lat pull downs? Yeah, yeah. yeah just uh, like that one. slightly pronated one. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lat focus than anything else. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Berto has me doing, uh, I got to practice it. I don't, I, I don't think I ever really tried it yet, but um with uh well i always use i i bought mag grips so i just bring it to the gym my gym doesn't have uh mag grips so um that helps but um <clears throat> it's like arching your your upper back I, I think if you look at berto's videos he does it too in it where you kind of arch the upper back more and you, when you're pulling down and it's i guess yeah, it, it targets like back. yeah i've seen that it targets uh the upper back i'm assuming upper back yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so as, as opposed to just like standing you know just straight upright and then kind of slight lean back he mm -hmm. wants like a really like more uh, arch in the upper back. Um, yeah, let me hit the upper back greatly on the uh, Yeah, you down. tried that before? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to try that next week. So, so. Uh, traditionally, I've always done like some kind of, some kind of like lat biased. Yeah, down. yeah, exactly. Right. That's what I meant. Yeah, my mm -hmm. my upper back needs a lot of work. So I might start throwing those in. Yeah, along yeah. With the, uh, the chest yeah. boarded road. Wait, so Dirk, you do that too right now? Like where you're um, kind of arching the upper back on the lat pull down? You kind of arch uh, I the don't upper back at all. I just do like the chest supported single arm lat pull down. That's mm -hmm. the only uh, yeah movement I do on lats and the cable row, dude. And the cable row upper back focused. Also mm -hmm. for the lats, I also uh, I started practicing um, the N one um, pull downs. Yeah, exactly. That's chest what supported N one pull downs. Yeah, but you're doing yeah. single arms, so that yeah, that's interesting um what they what they usually well they do they do have videos on single arm but um they use like uh obviously they use prime fitness grips but i use like yeah. the um the mag grip because that's all all i got yeah yeah and that works you well do that. yeah it works well you do uh, that they're like the iliac pull downs right yeah 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 exactly yeah they call them? yeah yeah i don't know what they call them i, I, I call them yeah, like n1 one pull downs <laughs> <laughs> But like uh, chest support, there's a slight, there's a slight like incline, right? Slight incline. Um, just engaging the, the core. Really? Obviously, yeah. always engaging the core is mm -hmm. uh, a cue that I, I always keep in mind when uh biasing the lats. Um, yeah. 
because you don't want to ever be arched when you're trying to bias the lot. So you need to always um, pull it, like engage yeah. my coin, like tuck myself a little bit in. Like yeah, turtle. yeah. Even if it's just a slight bit. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. What yeah. else? Um, I just try to control it and just feel it out. Like a lot of movements, like I use those cues, but then I, I really just try to feel it out because if if I finish a set and and um, I'm targeting a certain muscle group and I don't feel it in that muscle group, there's something wrong. So. Mm -hmm um yeah. just picking an appropriate weight and then like just trying to feel out the movement at least at least for the i usually go light like i'll warm up maybe like one set set so if i'm if i'm scheduled to do like two three sets i'll probably do one really light set as like a warm-up just to feel it out yeah. especially if it's a new movement mm -hmm. um that's how i approach like new movements like i'll just do like maybe one or two with really really light weight and just trying to feel it out and i'll probably get like really high reps and then once yeah. I get like that groove and then I'm like, all right, I'm ready. Now let's throw on some real weight. And then, but yeah. Yeah. What other cues do you, do you guys do that at all? The, the N1 or yeah, the iliac um, pull down. Uh, I played around with it during prep, but yeah. I, I kind of like keeping it simple right now with the pull downs. Mm. Okay. So I'm just doing regular, like um, just slightly pronated with the, with the mag grips. Yeah. Just doing, um, I'm just trying to find my groove on that because I'm I'm biasing the lats a little bit more on my pull downs and upper back. Nah. I realized I probably should bias the upper back a little bit more just because that is a weak area for me. My lats developed really well in the last. Yeah, few years. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really want to. Yeah, it's funny because you know, uh, you know how we hit our lats during training. That's yeah. also how I pose for my rear double bicep. I try to keep my rib cage down. I had um, Puya. He actually took a picture of us uh, at Mayhem Wayne. Yeah, and then, like, I try to keep my rib cage down to bring my lats out on stage a little bit better. And like for yeah. the rear, for the rear, the rear poses. Yeah, the rear double bicep. I yeah. keep my rib cage down, and then I just uh, I pose it, and then I, I try to feel that. Oh my, shit! Uh, okay. My lats the exact same way, and it. You guys po good. Uh, not to be like super off topic. You guys practice posing right now or no? For pictures. No. <laughs> <laughs> just for pictures. Just <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So you it's guys like, never really practice like during the off season. Um, no, not really. Um, I, I have a pump, and then I'll be like, "All right, let's hit a yeah." Let's see how things look right. Okay, I thought I was like the only one as well. Like after training in the locker room uh, in front of the mirror, I do some posing, but yeah, yeah. I'm not a psychopath. Probably <laughs> 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 there's a time and place for for posing practice. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. I don't even like the way I look sometimes, so it's like I don't even you know what I mean. Yeah, man, yeah. like it's like we're just gaining right now. It yeah, looks so yeah. much different when you're lean, is what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, like I, I know I said so I, I shifted all my focus from my physique to my training, but like I, I'll still take my shirt off. I'll hit some poses, just see how things look at 164 pounds. I'm yeah. oh yeah, Every pounds day up. I do that. Wait, yeah, after training, I'll go to the locker room. Kind of curious how take some to pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important though to do that. I feel like it's good because I, I really like how I look right now. So yeah, 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 yeah. And then also just take pictures, even if you're not gonna post it which I recommend all of us post, but, um, yeah, hell yeah. Just for the documentation of it. But, uh, yeah, just to, just to keep it in your phone. I remember yeah. when I first like started talking to Dirk, I'm like, yo, bro, you, you need to post more. Like you're not posting enough. <laughs> people want to see this shit do it more do it more yeah i know i know i know i'm like you're gonna regret this if you we're, don't we're do seven it more, weeks post show and, and dirk still has uh side glutes yeah, I know, right? What the fuck? Side. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, I still have like, I'm just excited seeing some veins in my lower body right now. That's sick. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. You know what it is too? Also, like when I feel like when you get like that vascularity, it just never goes away. That's yeah, something. yeah. I never. Well, I personally never. Well, I just had like, like I wasn't very vascular. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's what I heard. Are you guys? <laughs> Are you guys kind of and gauging off season? Uh, off -season right muscles right now, which still shine true. Like, like for me, like my side glutes still shining a little bit true because it's one of my strongest muscle groups. Like, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it no, definitely is because fat on it, like the muscles are so big that it's still like mm -hmm. shining through the fat. I, I think. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, for sure, dude. That's how you know it's fucking. That, that kind of leads into what I was about to ask you guys. Yeah, um, what were you gonna say? Yeah, I was going to say, like, how do you guys usually, like, gauge off-season gains? And, I mean, that's one way to do it right there. Like, how does this look at a certain body weight versus how did it look last time I was around this body weight? Yeah. Like, also, yeah. yeah, like, my legs are – they look leaner than they ever have, 20 pounds above stage weight. So, I'm like, Hell maybe yeah. 
maybe <laughs> I put on some a uh, little bit of meat there, you know? Yeah. Obviously, training progress, and I can feel it, man. It sounds weird, but when I'm touching my chest and flex, I can feel if it's yeah harder if I made gains or on my lats as well. And like when I'm feeling it, okay, it got bigger. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. That's why documentation is so so important. Exactly. I was about to say that because there's two ways, right? It's like. Either you yeah. gauge it by just stri strictly gauging your training and how strong you're getting, and uh, yes. that's one good way. Um, but but also just we're bodybuilders, so you know we we pay we have to pay attention to the aesthetic, right? Yeah, because they're, they're not going to ask us what they're not going to ask us what numbers we hit in the exactly, gym. Exactly, exactly. Right, no, right. It's important to pay attention to both because my right. last season I was so focused on performance that I didn't actually ever look at my physique. Yeah, um, on like a a more critical level, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw in the Natty News. I have a sweet spot, like, when we look at our physique. I like to look at it every six to eight weeks, something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. What do you mean look at it? Like, like, because I feel like you look at it every day. Like, just... I look at it. I mean, like, actually doing, like, a video where I'm doing posing. Oh, okay, I'm... okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's good. Video in the morning, like, I do it, like, every six, eight weeks, mm -hmm. something like that. What was I going to say? Oh, I was going to say on, on Natty News, I saw that uh, on your episode, Brian, I saw that you were, they were asking, like, um, how much muscle you gained, like, uh, from from your first prep to your, your last prep. Do you guys actually, like, uh, like how would you even gauge that? I don't even, like, you know what I mean? Aside from, like, you can't estimating, exactly get, you, you know can't what I mean? Get a exact Unless you're Chris Barricat, where you have, like, the science, you know what I mean, the lab. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. really know how you, how do you gauge that? Because, obviously, like, I saw you were talking about your stage weight. But it is true that you could be the same weight and gain, you know, a massive amount of muscle compared mm -hmm. to your your last uh, go around, right? So yeah, like, yeah. I don't even gauge like I don't even I, do, you pay, would, do you even pay attention to that? Like I don't even I, pay get, I, I pay attention to it. I, I get like a range in my head because the thing is, I on on paper. Let's let's talk about on paper first. I uh, I was ten pounds heavier in 2021 than I was in 2016, but I was also yeah. considerably leaner too. So it's like on top of those ten pounds. How many pounds worth of fat was I leaner in 2021 versus 2026 or 2016? So it's like yeah. you don't have a definite number, but yeah, there's no definite number, but just like estimates, ranges, yeah, like a good, a good fucking amount. Because some people are just like so focused on that. It's like, bro, you didn't gain 20 pounds of muscle. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm 20 pounds I'm of a iffy. muscle is a lot. Like, you, yeah, I'm still iffy. I don't understand I, I, that, bro. Say 15 pounds. 15 pounds is like a fuck ton of muscle. Like, think about yeah. that. Yeah. 15 pounds of lean meat. Like exactly. I was about to say that was a good analogy where you were like, um, uh, like if you just imagine getting 15 pounds of fucking lean chicken breasts, like fucking just mm. slapping it on. I think Berto told me that one time and I was like, wow, that's a good analogy where you just think of like lean meat, like a lean chicken breast. Yeah, you break it down a little bit, like 15 pounds, that's a ounces. lot. And just slapping it on body parts, like that's a lot. 120 like, ounces of yeah. lean meat. And, and how many times in the gym or like these gym bros are talking about oh i gained like 15 pounds of muscle like no you fucking didn't yeah <laughs> like, yeah i'm not i'm not a fan of the body body fat conversation where it's like oh what body yeah. fat do you grab? i don't care man i'm trying to look the part on stage yeah, yeah, yeah they're not gonna ask me what my body fat percentage is they're not gonna test me on stage like yeah right 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 and how can it like it's so hard to gauge that like, yeah, it's like, like people accurately just throw it out. right people just throw it out without yeah. any basis of what body fat even looks like like one percent of it looks like yeah it's like it's it's a moving target when people throw yeah numbers. right 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 what is like the most accurate uh i haven't done any of those like lab tests have you guys ever got any of that like I've, uh i've done a really dexa? accurate dexa like the exact same one that bearcat does uh okay. I, I i did i got one of those done at uh uc irvine in one of the labs oh it yeah was really cool it was really during, cool was during your was it during your prep nah i did it peak off season oh shit <laughs> did you have access to it for for free uh for free bro i got paid ten dollars for a study oh a study. shit they that's paid sick. me they paid me ten dollars <laughs> yeah, i was like what I was like, hell yeah and, like, yeah and they got, they printed all the data out for me i was like okay do you guys follow edna on instagram yeah Who? edna edna mode uh edna, yeah, man she's yeah, yeah. she's no, really, really so she did crazy. she was doing um uh i forgot what kind of test it was but she was like getting dunked in like a, a water tank yeah it's uh, like the the hydro yeah, yeah yeah yeah. that was interesting 
I heard Dex is the most accurate, but honestly, Dex is not even that accurate. I was about to say that. Exactly. I heard Dex is the most accurate, but it's not even that accurate. So it's like, yeah. Because here's the thing. um, Numbers can't kind of, uh, they can't reflect 100% the progress you've made from one season to the next. Sure, like numbers are cool and all to look at, but you just can't quantify gain sometimes yeah exactly yeah, i can't yeah. pass about the numbers on stage yeah <laughs> yeah exactly. you can like estimate it by the look because i feel like i could look at someone's physique and then be like all right you're around this range but yeah yeah the more experienced you are i'd say the more accurate you can gauge that but it's like even then it's yeah what's the point it's just yeah exactly that's what i'm saying it's like all right if it yeah. makes you feel better you know what i mean yeah. when you lose that body fat you'll see it and you could kind of be like, all right, I'm, I'm like in 10 to 12, like around the 10 to 12 percent. Yeah, I just don't care about it because there, there's so many guys who look like they're 30 weeks out saying they're 6 percent body fat. It's like, dude, I, I don't care about these numbers. Yeah, I don't yeah. be in the same conversation as this. Yeah, as this yeah. Guy. And it's like at some point, it's just like you're, you're just your goal is not even like to hit a percentage. It's to look the part, like you said, like just to look exactly. a certain way. Exactly. Like we're not chasing like a, a, a percentage number, but if you, dude, uh, there's like this um, really expensive uh, weight scale. I think you guys definitely I know saw exactly it. what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So I put your hands on it, and then it gives you your body fat percentage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's there's an Armatron. I think it's a, the brand, and you just put your hands on it. That's like the cheaper one. But my my the owner of my gym, he bought like this brand called InBody. And they use like the the actual. He bought one that was like maybe three, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. It's just like a normal scale, and you kind of just hold on to like whatever it is. Like it's like I guess it's heat synced, and 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 on the on the actual uh, weight scale itself, where you, where you stand on, it's like heat synced. I think there's like these like metal uh, plates on it. Mm. So I guess I'm assuming it's by heat. Um, but yeah, you just hold it, and it tells you your body weight, and it tells you your uh, your, your, your body fat. I don't know if you guys saw me post it. And at some point during the, the, uh, I think maybe like two weeks out or a week out, I was like 4%. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Those things, those things are like a complete cash grab. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. dude. And, and apparently $500 the, or... yeah, exactly. And then the, the, the actual one that they use in labs and like sports, um, therapy or whatever, like professional athletes, uh, in their, like, uh, I guess their PT section or whatever their, their, physical training se- section they have like the in body brand and uh, apparently this is what the, this way he told me and they use that um and it, it's supposed to be very accurate but i don't know i don't really pay yeah. attention to that stuff yeah it's yeah. like yeah. Yeah. No, it's I just mean. it's fun to see it's fun to talk about too. yeah, yeah. talk about because it's cool to see i'm like oh yeah i'm four percent right yeah fuck that i'm not really no, no shot i'm four percent i i maybe care a little bit about the stepping next time on stage and having a higher stage weight this would be cool yeah yeah, like, and, and and lean, right? Like 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 a better looking physique. Yeah, if you have yeah. the same conditioning and you're like I don't know, like four five pounds heavier, you know for sure you made a shitload of progress. Yeah, and especially like, if you're actually I, dicing the first time. If you're dicing yeah. the first time, and then you come in with that conditioning or even better even a few better. years later, that's how you know you made some damn good progress. Yeah, that's oh, my yeah. goal, bro. Next next go around, bro. Yeah, that's like my goal, of course. Hey, Hell yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. I, you know, I, have, a, a, uh, I have a few things. Uh, not to be like uh, everywhere with it, but I have uh, Gordon See You. This is from the comments. He says, loving the episodes. Can you get Brian to list his list out his Spotify playlist for us in the next <laughs> podcast? Homie got a different mood every day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing emoji. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Gordon, thanks for that comment, by the way. But yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people, even on the last podcast, if you guys watch the Natty News podcast, I think everyone is very interested in your playlist. So, what's yeah. going on? What's what's your top five, bro? My top Do you have five? a top five, bro? I don't, dude. Sometimes I, I mean, I have playlists, but sometimes I don't even have, I don't even listen to playlists. I'll be like, I'm feeling this album. I'll oh, okay. be like High School okay. Musical or something, or this. <laughs> Yo, I'm dead. It'll yeah. be something. I, I just like listening to something that makes me no, feel, feel not, you. not not just happy, you. but like just positive, just have positive energy. You know, like yeah, I'll you, listen you to something artist. nostalgic from my childhood or like uh, music from my favorite show. That that okay. type of thing. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's I just have to feel good. I, I don't got to feel angry or anything. I don't. I don't. I don't get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I do. I used to do that, but you burn out fast. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, dude. That's because that's like where I kind of grew up in in training, where it's just like you're listening to Lincoln Park, you're listening to Slipknot, fucking uh, Disturbed. Like I think Leroy said that in the, his podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I, that's the shit I was listening to. Like DMX in the rap side. Yeah, like, DMX. Yeah, like fucking uh, nowadays, like Meek Mill, Nipsey Hustle. Like that's what my my type of thing is, and I, that, that's where I kind of grew up. In general like just listening to rap yeah. and hip-hop so it's like yeah i know i know Dirk. you're you're pretty into hip-hop right just from your yeah, I do. and i'm having like really fun thing like i never listen to mu- music while training never what really i did that last music and I could, the focus is amazing was it yeah i might have to try that i've done that a few times by accident because i forgot headphones and stuff Mm-hmm. but i, I feel a little like, psychotic though i like the r&b vibe man i've been listening to uh, i gotta put you on to this girl um but the past two posts i put on one of uh, one of the guys that i've been training with um because there's a couple guys that like i mm. train with that like take my pictures and do videos and stuff um and shout out to uh, chris i don't know if he watches this but he uh put me on to this girl named looney mm-hmm. it's like an r she's an r&b artist and, yeah yeah i posted on my past two and it, it's just like been a vibe for me like that type Sick. of music. Yeah, link me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely gonna, I'm definitely gonna link you. I don't think you would like it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Regarding regarding the Spotify playlist, though, I, I I guess we'll link it in the description or something. Yeah, yeah. We yeah we gotta put, <laughs> we gotta put your. Uh, I don't know. I guess you since you don't have a top five, but like I, I mean, uh, yeah, like I, what I, have I, you I, listened to? All right, so this week, what have you been listening to? So here's the thing, I uh. I listen to fucking like every genre except for except for EDM. I hate that crap. If you if you listen to that crap, you got issues. I'm sorry. That's straight garbage. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna hurt all these fucking uh, ABGs, bro. You're gonna hurt the ABGs feeling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just lost some fans, bro. Bro, how are they gonna ruin all my R and B? Oh my god, with their with their garbage EDM. Like, what are you doing? All right. <laughs> yeah but that yeah, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan either but uh, yeah. I, I can listen to it i don't listen to edm i don't listen to country but i mean i don't listen to heavy metal or anything either but i like to listen to heavy metal like yeah me too bro but for my crazy, wife, I mean, what do you listen to like what heavy metal you listen to like like how heavy is it like bullet for my valentine the only heavy metal i, oh, okay. I like yeah, yeah that's not like too bad bro slipknot was like the 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 worst like for me i'm like holy shit like i'm on the verge of like like Mm. i'm in there but like not really that you know what i mean depending on the song (laughs) because i I used to have friends growing up that that actually were like like had their own band like heavy metal bands and like they would do like um they they would make music videos and like have like 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 uh not co- I guess concerts, but like inside their house, bro, like in like a living yeah. room. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And it would just be fucking yo, it's crazy. So I had yeah. like that's that was weird growing up, bro. When I was growing up, like I, I uh I listened to a lot of different shit and I was just like trying to find myself, I guess, because like there was times where I had like a fucking mohawk like this high, like a Liberty bro? Spikes, bro. Like <laughs> not Liberty <laughs> Spikes, but like I had like like a fucking mohawk. I gotta show you guys I a picture of it. Of that, and I was into rock at the time, you know what I mean? Like, and I was into like different types of rock. Like, like uh, at some point, like I, I dabbled into like like heavy metal because my friends were into that, and then yeah. um, and then like some really soft shit like um like Green Day or like uh yeah yeah I like, like, I like Panic at the rock. Disco or something like that. Yeah. Like I dabble into that for a little bit because my cousin put me on that, and then yeah, nice. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a I'm a fan of I'm I'm a fan of rock like yeah like pop just rock not, just not working out bro, bro have you have you have you listened to like Christian rock that stuff's good yeah yeah uh see now I had a phase where I was like very into uh church because uh, you know and then I would listen to like gospel music but not like extreme like gospel music but like not all right so that's subjective extreme like what is extreme um yeah well, what would I listen to yeah like Christian rock. Like, yeah. exactly yeah yeah because it's religious. good but it's not like too like mm. i don't know how to explain it like too churchy <laughs> i guess yeah, yeah you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah i know exactly what yeah, yeah, yeah it's still it's still music like, but it's still something it's i would do yeah it's but there, are, there yeah. are like allusions to god and stuff right right exactly 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 that makes me feel good yeah <laughs> like like right now like also I, I like chance the rapper he's like a kind of like yeah. kind of like a christian 
I guess like he, he's the most Christian rapper you, you can get right now. I feel like like that's mainstream. That's mainstream, um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I used to like that. Or well, I do like that, but yeah, but the R and B vibe has been a vibe, man. Yeah, R and B R and B is my most consistent for sure. Yeah, yeah. Especially for I don't know, for powerlifting it was a little bit different. I, I like it's weird. In the beginning of my powerlifting, um like when I first started doing that, I was I was listening to hard shit. But then you're, you you're a USPA. <laughs> yeah yeah and then i started becoming a little bit you know as my i got more experience i started becoming a little bit more calm because um you know i just more focused on the cues and stuff yeah it's less focused on the uh the hype yeah the less hype, yeah more yeah. on like focusing on the cues focusing on exactly. actually and then, properly and for bodybuilding it's like that for me like it, it, to uh, even more extreme where like now i'm just really focused on like just feeling the muscle work yeah seeing. bodybuilding is just always talking. focused man i just yeah that's why it's really nice being in my own garage and just have some music really cool music playing and i'm just yeah. doing my yeah definitely man yeah uh what else do i have you guys have any uh anything else I wanna, i'm just surprised have... zoom hasn't kicked us out i know i have a um <laughs> yeah. it's so weird it likes to kick us out sometimes sometimes it extends it i have no clue how that works it's on the day no not that we always from sundays i have no idea Had something and nothing changed yeah man oh kyle power shout out to kyle power in the comments says dirk never mentioned living in thailand forcing him to be more chill and he says keep up the great show guys wait so 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 cover that a little bit you lived in I thailand thought on your stories i didn't know you lived there I thought you were just visiting. Oh, you lived in Thailand. Kai Powers. He's he's actually quite a friend of mine. <laughs> like oh, I met okay. Him. So you know him he's personally. He's, he, I was living in Koh Tao on an island in Thailand. And Kyle, he was a dive instructor over there. So, yeah, I was living there for like nearly one year. And I made like a lot of gains in Thailand, actually. Where like, were you working also- out? Uh, they had gyms out there, like normal gyms? Yeah, they had like great gyms, man. Like, really? wise, like nutrition wise, you get everything there, man. Like, like obviously great, like wise chicken, vegetables, and all that kind of things. Okay. So, yeah, and like his question was like, like how it made me more chill in Thailand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think, like the vibes are different there. Like in Thailand, it's like, like the vibes are more chill uh... and. I was sometimes like the first few years uh, in bodybuilding, I was a little bit always like, like that go getter mentality, let like go hard or go home. And the longer I train, I realized like finding that middle ground. And when I was living there in Thailand, I was like, because everyone is chill there, so chill. That's not like, like it is in Germany where everyone has that high career goals, like go hard, go hard, work, work, work. Oh, That's more- okay. Yeah, chill, do your thing, have fun. And I was a little bit like applying that to my training as well. And I realized, oh, I make better, better progress that way when I have like also that chill aspect in my training and not like that. I need to make progress, I need to train mm-hmm. super hard all the yeah. time. So, yeah, there got to be a happy medium, I feel like exactly, man. Between Definitely. being like, like soft to, to me, uh, like, uh, let me just put it in lame yeah. terms where it's like being soft and like going hard. You know what I mean? I don't want to mm. call people soft. You know what I mean? Definitely. But, but man, like, man. you know, some people are just so like, that's just what it is. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like you, you got to put in the effort to make the progress. You know what I mean? You can't just be always about like fucking RP. Like, Oh, I'm re- I went past my RP. All right. Sometimes you're going to do that because you're putting in the effort, man. Yeah. But it's yeah, like like we said, like Alberto also teached us, I think, also really well to find that middle ground. Like yeah, yeah. Also for Alberto, like Agreed. wait, so you what what year were you living in Thailand? You just want to yeah, go there? Um, like like let me just I go there again in like one or two years. Let's see, maybe after the next prep, because now with COVID it's still everything a little bit, yeah, screwed sure. over. And, yeah, also, like, I was working there as a bartender, mm-hmm. and when I go over there again, my goal is actually to work there as, like, a personal trainer, like, in, mm-hmm. like, a big, big gym over there. Is the fitness community big over there? It's not. It's actually quite big. It's, oh. like, not in Europe or in the U.S., but it's growing for sure. 
And yeah, I just li li like the lifestyle there. It's always warm. It's like everyone is happy. And I can also like have everything I need there. I have a great gym, nutrition wise, everything I need. It's way cheaper there than here. So it's amazing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Nice. So, that comes yeah. So, <clears throat> what what oh. are actually you guys like? Do you plan to like live your real life in the US or like? Oh, you, you, you like, did that because you, you just want to go to Thailand? Like, why Thailand out of all the places? Do you have anyone you know there? Um, I, I was I was doing a holiday there, and I liked it so much that I was like, oh, I want to live there for a whole year. year. Sick, <laughs> All right, I got yeah. a. Me some I want to shout out. I always want to shout out the the, the people that, that that have been commenting and been watching because uh, we've been getting a lot of good feedback. I don't know if you guys have been reading the, oh, the, that, the comments. Yeah, yeah, no, I've been, I've been seeing them. Yeah, man. Um. So Roman Werner says, "Where is the Spotify link? Podcasts are great to." to listen by driving but uh so that with the spotify i started doing research and, and uh you have to pay so eventually you know probably uh, uh, maybe i'll invest into it but um yeah just keep supporting and we'll see where that goes because i think you have to pay a um i forgot how much it is a month it's not too much but uh, yeah i'm not trying to yeah this is just for fun this is for for the people so for now just be on youtube um so that's for war roman werner and uh, also, uh, the homie Josh Chang, he was with us. I don't know if you guys remember. He was with yeah. us on the uh, Worlds. He says, um, uh, let me, damn, he, he wrote a lot. So he says, where's the question? Oh, he says, uh, he totally agree. I totally agree with you, your guys' approach. I feel like most people outside of bo the natural bodybuilding world neglect the fundamentals and focus on the wrong things rather than what matters. Mm -hmm. consistency progressive overload blah, blah blah experience trial latest studies blah, blah blah what was the question where's the question i know there was a question oh he said also i think the whole is sumo deadlift optimal for bodybuilding questions giraffe gets for sumo deadlift is pretty funny like bro this guy has put 10 to 15 pounds of lean body mass in five years post new beginnings he can do whatever he wants <laughs> <laughs> the ironic part is you know these same people Wait, where's the question i thought there was a question Oh, here we go. Sorry. Anyways, we'd love to hear you guys do an episode going over some of the top natural bodybuilders with a natty or not analysis. I know a majority of them are natty. However, I do think there are a few people that are sus. Okay. We'll probably do that in another episode. Yeah, we'll probably thought, do that. Another, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that'll be I, another here's, topic. Here's my quick answer to that. If they claim natty, I'll believe them most of the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same with me, man. Like, I'm not too, like, pressed. I'm not limited by anything, really. Yeah, like, some people, it's, it's very noticeable. But, like, what are you going to say? It's like, like, I don't know. I'm not too worried about what other oh, people I don't, are. I don't even, yeah, I don't even try to see. I still just, I, dude, honestly, I, what were you going to say? Sorry. I yeah. just give them the benefit of the doubt. And then uh, if they ever say that they hopped on, then sure. Okay, I'll get it. Yeah, what are your thoughts <laughs> on that, Dirk? You, same thing. Yeah, same thing. Like there, obviously, yeah. like some people where I'm like, "Well, he's natty." Well, it's hard to believe. But then I, I also look sometimes a little bit about like, like they're always cues and stuff like that. Like, yeah. yeah, like I can easily spot the fake natty actually. Yeah, <laughs> like you all have like that guy sometimes also in the commercial gym who claims to be natty but then he has no single clue about anything about training or nutrition that's Nothing. a big one then, that's a big one good yeah, shape. Yeah. and i'm 100 sure this guy is on juice <laughs> like yeah no way. it's like hard to, it's hard to say sometimes sometimes but yeah, 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 I know what you mean. That is a good sign that that uh, they're kind of uneducated, I guess, with the, with the training and nutrition. It's funny though, because if you've been around untested guys, you really do know when someone's hopped on. And oh yeah, I, had, yeah. We we talked about this before, Wayne. Like I had a friend. Um, I, I knew like he hopped back on, or like he got back on cycle. Yeah. And then like I mean later he, I, I mean I, I like pointed it out, and he was like, "How'd you know?" And I was wow. like. Just a hunch. I don't know. <laughs> but what was the sign that you knew, though? I could tell, like, their faces were getting more bloated. Mm. Like, I could see that. Um, yeah. And then the strength or just the physique? No, I don't even look at the strength or physique. Usually it's just the presence. I don't know. It's it's hard to tell what yeah. exactly it is. But I, I can just – I yeah, can't get it. you knew him long enough to kind of yeah. know, like – Yeah, yeah. 
like you you told me too like you could tell by the smell right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was joking though like and you can also tell like 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 on the personality like often they get really like way more energetic than usual overconfident and stuff like that when they yeah, like all guys on. i know that are on they're they're really aggressive about fucking everything i'm like chill the hell out man <laughs> yeah, um, yeah 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 i don't know too much about that but i just don't even worry too much about other people like if you're yeah, worried yeah. so much about what other people are doing it's like why you're just stressing yeah. yourself out you know what i mean it's, like, it's usually why? it's usually when they're already on and then they they go like off cycle and then they hop back on then then i'll be like let, let me test to see if I can, yeah, I can tell. Yeah, because then you feel like a hater at some points, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I feel sometimes. Because I used to, yeah, when I, I mean, first started doing that, I used to, or when I first started lifting, I would be like that. I'm, like, trying to fucking analyze everyone. It's like, bro, it's like, just worry about your own games. Like, you're stressing yeah. yourself out. Yeah, like yeah. I said, give everyone the benefit of the doubt. The world's a lot bigger than you think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because, <laughs> listen, like, there's people that think that uh, probably you guys are on gear. <laughs> yeah and it's like i see myself every day i'm like what the hell is there to look at here <laughs> <laughs> you know there's definitely people that think dirk's on, on shit i bet so yeah Man, yeah. I'm World cold, cold, especially when, so you know when you come that injection thing like the how it's called the uh how you say in english like the where you inject yourself the the what injecting yeah like a needle like a syringe yeah like i got a lot of comments just in oh needle. The, the emoji the emoji they, they just have yeah, like a, the juice. Needle or uh, a lot of them like <clears throat> chewing up smiley oh. <laughs> Bro, the because comments, of the world on your latest on your last post those are hilarious man <laughs> like they're man, all just talking shit <laughs> i have no idea man crazy yeah like that hilarious. that like that like a uh, back shot from yeah. worlds yeah, with the meant, and everything. I, I, They're all like all disgusted and everything. <laughs> yeah, man. All, all right. right, guys. You're making me some food now. Yeah, yeah. Any any right. closing thoughts on this episode? This was cool. It was a good talk. No, no. no. I'm successful. I'm good. Fun talk. Guys, yeah. thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. Yeah. For all the viewers, man. Uh, for tuning in. We get a lot of good feedback. I'm gonna put our our all our Instagrams if you guys want to give us a follow in the description. Um, yeah. yeah, we're out. Natty boy, natty right. boy, crazy making games. <laughs> Peace, yo. Peace.